All right. Well, good morning, everybody. Hope you're all still staying safe, healthy out there, uh, whether you're back to work or still at home. Uh, but uh, we wish you guys the best and just want to thank you. Welcome and thank you for attending CloudPoint Geographics webinar on GIS for cemeteries, helping your records, maps, and families. Uh, my name is Bill Steele. I handle the business development and marketing for CloudPoint. And today, Erin Strickler, one of our professional engineers, she's going to be walking us through how GIS can help you manage your cemeteries. We are working hard to continually bring you more content and webinars. Um, upcoming, to, uh, actually tomorrow, we've got an introduction to Parcel Fabric in ArcGIS Pro. And then in July, webinar on NG911 and uh, how GIS can help the data for that. SignOps, our sign inventory management system, um, and how that works with GIS on July 9th. And then towards the end of July, uh, we have another webinar on Survey123. Just want to go over real quick uh, functions in Zoom. So we will be taking questions. You can submit those at any time. Uh, we'll get, try to get to those at the end of the webinar. Uh, just hit the little Q&A button down at the bottom of your toolbar should pop up the box. You can submit it there. Also, if there's any problems in terms of seeing or hearing us, you can send us a message in the chat room as well. I'll be keeping an eye on that. So what is GIS anyway? GIS stands for Geographic Information System. And most people just think of it as really fancy maps, but it's so much more than that. Using lines, points, and shapes, or polygons as we call them, to record layer, present information. We can collect, store, analyze, manipulate, manage, present any type of spatial and geographical data you'd like. And we primarily work with municipalities and governments for everything from figuring out taxes based on land records to mapping and tracking all the storm drains in your city for maintenance records. Uh, but the more we worked with these entities, the more they saw what we could do and how it could benefit their communities in helping manage their cemeteries. And from there, we realized all cemeteries could benefit from our help. So those layers of data that we've talked about are great, but how does that look for a cemetery? So for a cemetery's purposes, you'll need at least two layers, the aerial imagery and a grave layer. Uh, any additional layers will be dependent upon your needs. So this diagram shows a lot layer and a roadway slash pathway layer. And then behind each of these layers is a database or spreadsheet of the information. And that database is comprised of your interment and sales records. Uh, we put that in a spreadsheet and Aaron's going to go over and show an example of what we use to organize records. And then these two things make up a complete GIS. So in order to make GIS accessible to everybody, we utilize Esri's web maps and apps to bring the GIS to you. We create applications all accessible through an internet browser and they can be secure or they can be open to the public. And these applications will allow you to view, edit, and share your data. And samples of these applications is what Aaron's gonna demo for you today. So even though the possibilities really are endless, we're gonna show you a couple different options for cemetery management. And these examples are actual cemeteries that we have worked for. So again, any questions that may come up during the presentation, just post them in the Q&A box at any time and we'll go through them at the end. And with that, I will turn the screen over to Aaron. Thank you, Bill. Get my screen shared here. All right. So um, we learned very on, very early on in working with cemeteries that um, there is no one size fits all. Um, obviously, cemeteries vary in size, but also in in the way they maintain their records and in the way they want to maintain their records into the future. So. What you'll see here today, all the apps we have are configurable. So we don't sell a piece of software. We provide you with a flexible platform. And like Bill mentioned, um, the name Esri, they are the company, they're the worldwide leader in GIS software. So we use them for all of our projects, um, but find that it is particularly useful with cemeteries because again, we can leverage the cloud. We can give you a login to access this information and you never really have to know that you're interacting with the GIS system. 
So this first example on the screen is our most basic application. Um, like Bill said, you need at least two layers. So here we've got an aerial imagery that we have flown with our drone, and we have points to represent burials. Um, this, we created this as just a really user-friendly way to get started, particularly for cemeteries that don't have any other data. All they've got maybe is what's on the headstone, but they want to be able to have a place to search um, and interact with that data. So what I want to do first is kind of show you how it works and then show you how um, you are able to edit and update as we, as we hand it over to you to manage. So I'm going to type in a last name to search. And you'll notice over here I have a list of all the Weisenbergs in the cemetery. And my map has been filtered by that last name. So now if I zoom out, I can see in the cemetery all the places where Weisenbergs are buried. And so as you're searching, you can narrow that down by adding a first name. Um, and kind of narrow it down to the person that you're looking for. But once we have found that person, I'm going to click on Ida and any information we have in the system, so we don't have all of her information, but any information we have is shown in this pop-up. Um, and one of the neat things we can do is tie find a grave links to burials because I know there's a lot of information that volunteers and maybe even your volunteers have already put on find a grave and um, it's really nice to be able to be able to leverage that so if I just click on this find a grave link it's going to take me to her find a grave page and I'll show you how easy that is to add um, so again, the setup for this is really quick. This is sort of what, let me clear this, what a finished cemetery would look like, but when we hand it over to you, it would look more like this. So we would fly our aerial imagery, we would put it onto a map, create this application for you, and then set up a login for you to be able to add and access your data. So because this is, internet based if you have an internet enabled device like a tablet or a phone you can do this right in the field so you could be standing in front of this headstone um, and we have options here but again these are customizable so i want to put a standard burial on this headstone and once I click that, now I have a table of all the information that I can store. And um, this is where on the back end, it's storing it in those um, Excel-like tables, but you never have to interact with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and add another Weisenberg. So I'm just tabbing through these. Um, if I know his find a grave ID, all I have to do is add that. And that will create a link in the pop-up. Um, date of birth, I can either click in here and pick a date or I can type one in. And then if date of death is sooner, then I can just click on that. And if I wanted to change the type of burial, I could do that there too. Additionally, we can add files. So if you click choose file and you have an obituary saved or some other document saved that you wanted to add to this record, you could go select it and it would be saved with this point. So now that I'm done filling out the information, I'm gonna hit save. And then Clifford's point, burial point is there and saved in your record. So I could go down the line and add more that way. And it, it um, again, allows you to do this on your own. So um, it's a cost-effective way to get started with GIS. The thing that this does not show, um, we're, again, we're just collecting and storing burial data. So if you want to be able to view and store sales data, then we kind of go up the next to a more intermediate uh, set of applications. So that's what I want to show next. Um, this is what we call our cemetery manager app. Um, and I, as I zoom out, you can see that the cemetery 
has already had a, a mapping system in place and we were able to add that to the map so that now it's not just a point for every burial but we actually have polygons rectangles for each grave site so whether there's someone buried there or not we have a shape for it and that means we can store records with it Um, so in this application, this would be uh, an example of an application that required a login. It would be secure and meant just for you and your staff. Um, and if I, much like clicking on a point, if I click on a grave, then I can see the information that we have already stored. Typically in a situation like a, a cemetery of this size, they would already have records stored in a digital format. And they may already have maps digitally or maps that we need to draw, but then we connect the dots between the records and the polygons with this grave ID. And that is how, um, so you're not starting from scratch in, in this example like you would be for Gravekeeper. Again, just for a different set of circumstances. So this information would have already come to us and we would connect that, but you have the ability then to edit that if you need to. Um, and I wanna show you how we can create a sale. So again, not just recording burials, but recording sales. So if I have, click on this grave here. This one is occupied. I can also search for a grave. So let's say I know the grave that I want to purchase or that a customer wants to purchase. I can enter that grave ID and it'll take me right to it. So I'll clear that so you can see that. So when I click on this grave, make sure I have the right one. Um, I'm going to change its grave status to owned because I'm selling it. Um, I will add my name to it. Um, and, and these are, um, again, configurable. So if you want to keep track of the cost, you can. If you don't, or you have other information you want to keep track of, we can do that as well. This particular cemetery is set up for one burial and one sale per grave, but we know um, in lots of cases you might have more than one burial or even more than one sale per grave. So we can also set up a system so that you can handle that situation. So once I have edited the information, I'm going to hit save. And now if I click on that grave, um, that information has been saved and you can see that. Um, again, you can add an attachment. So if I have a deed record I wanted to add, that is where I could do that. Um, and creating a burial is similar. You're just filling in different fields, but I know that I have a burial um, in this location. So I'm going to go here and I already have some of that information filled in. So I want to edit it. Um, so John Doe is his name. We have a date of death and internment date. Um, and oh, so what I had done previously was change that status from owned, not occupied, to occupied to mark that now there is a burial there. So I haven't saved anything here. Um, the other thing I wanted to show is, I know there are situations where you may need to add a grave. Um, so say John's wife wants to purchase this. There's not a, a polygon for us to click on. <laughs> so what I want to do, there is a polygon because I had already drawn one, but what I can do is draw a new grave like this. Let's draw one here. So if I just click here, I can create a new grave and that allows you the flexibility to add to your system without having to come back to us to say, hey, I need one grave in this spot. You have the flexibility to do that. The other thing this manager does is allow you to keep other layers. So maybe you wanna know more about your cemetery than just your records. Um, we can keep track of anything that's tied to the ground. So one example here are utilities. 
So we have a layer for utility lines. So this would be an electric line. We can keep track of where your water lines are. And just a, just a nice thing to have, particularly if you're gonna make a new grave. So I would not obviously want to draw a new grave here because I know that's where the gas line is. So uh, other things you could keep track of would be trees or flagpoles or benches. Again, anything tied to the ground that you might want to keep track of is very easy to add to a map. So that again was the manager application it would be secure login and for you to update and edit records. We have another one called available lots and this could also just be um, secure, but you could share this with the public if you wanted them to see where your available lots are. So here we have green to show the lots that have not been sold and are not occupied. Um, this could be taken out to the cemetery, again, on a phone or a tablet that has internet on it, um, so that as you're walking through the cemetery, you can see the available lots. Uh, we think that would be really handy, um, especially as you're trying to sell or if someone wants to be near a family member. Um, we can search the name and it'll take us to that location. And then you could, while you're out in the field, you could then maybe point them to a, an available grave that is near a family member. The next one would be a public search app. So these applications are using demo data from a cemetery that we have um, created these apps for. Um, they have an actual, this is the live data then, where, from their website where you can go to this grave search. So from their website, they have a link to the search application. And um, their visitors then, instead of calling and finding out where their loved ones are, can just go right to this application and we can search. I'm going to pick on Smiths. And so I know now right where May Smith is buried. There are a couple other neat things I can do. If I want to see more than one family member while I'm out, I can flag her grave. and maybe search for another relative somewhere on the other side of the cemetery and I can do the same thing. And again, if you have, um, you could also find this information on your phone. Um, so you wouldn't have to do this, but for people who wanted to do it on their computer and then print it out, they have the option then to print this map and would help them locate their loved ones with the map that they were able to print from their home without taking up your staff's time. Uh, lastly, I want to show a dashboard. So because all of this information is being stored in a GIS, it's not just in an Excel sheet and this isn't just a map, we have other ways we can interact with the data. And so that looks like, can look like this dashboard, um, which might be useful to kind of monitor what's happening in your cemetery. But for this particular one, we've got 18,000 total graves and we have it divided by it, their status. So we have 5,000 available, 7,000 are occupied, you know, almost 2,000 are owned, but not occupied. And then we've got 4,500 that are unknown. So right there might be an opportunity to, to figure out what's going on with those 4,500 and maybe you've got some in there that you can sell. So it's just a great way to see your assets um, and, and interact with the data in different ways. Again, this is, so now I've got it divided up by lot. So by far, lot C has the most available. So a way to help you make decisions. Um, a couple other options that we have, which would be more advanced, would be routing. We can help, um, we've created applications that, that exist on a kiosk in a cemetery office that would route you to your loved one's location. So kind of like what I showed here, but it would actually, in instances of a larger 
a larger cemetery would route you to show you the, the best path to get there. Uh, we can make custom applications. So if this manager application doesn't quite do what you need, uh, we, can, we can go a little bit further in the customization. And then we also can do 3D mausoleum models. Um, and just a way, another way to visualize mausoleums. So this cemetery has a mausoleum right here. And so it is represented by squares. Um, so these actually are obviously stacked up the, up the wall. But what we can do now with our 3D modeling is have them the, in the correct spot with the correct size, and you can actually move around and see the labels on the face of the mausoleum so you know exactly where the person is that you're looking for. So with that, um, I kind of want to talk about our process. Um, we would look at your data and kind of provide you an estimate of cost, kind of talk about which of these options would be best for you. Uh, for all, all options, we would pro provide a drone flight. Um, and with that, we paint marks on the ground. We survey those points with GPS and we use those points to align the imagery to scale to the right place on our model of the world. We would then collect sample data. So unless you need us to collect all the headstones, we wouldn't do that, but we would collect a handful so that when we do get the maps, the polygons on the ground, and we get those tied together with the burial records that you've given us, we know that everything's lining up correctly. We would create those polygon layers based on maps that you have. And then we would relate those interment records or sales records with the polygons that we created. So um, that can happen in a couple ways. One, if you have an existing database system, you can export directly from there and we can use that data. If you have data already in Excel, we can utilize that. Um, but Bill had said at the beginning, I was going to show you an example of uh, how we recommend that if you're starting from scratch, um, here's how we would recommend that you start digitizing your data. So this is a big task. Converting your paper records to digital is a big task. We have handled that for some clients and other clients have chosen to do this step on their own. So we developed this to aid in that process. Um, and, and really from a GIS perspective. So we want to make it simple to go from this data, this Excel data into GIS. So that's really what we were thinking when we created this. Um, so there are three tabs. The first just has some instructions that you can refer to after the fact. Um, and then we have a burials tab. So there, I want to point out a couple of important fields, and one is this grave ID field. So this is how we tie everything together. Your grave polygon will have this grave ID, and then any records, any burial records, um, whether there's one or two, um, any sales records, whether there's, you know, how many ever there are, we can keep track of transfers too. Those all um, are tied by this grave ID. So that's a very important number. And in this Excel sheet, I have given the ability to divide this up into divisions. So you might have sections, lots, and rows, whatever you call them. Um, we like to go from largest to smallest. So maybe it's, you know, section one, lot A, row four, and then grave two whatever, however you divide that up, um, we, in, it should be consistent. And so I, we have made this to calculate automatically um, from these fields. So that's a very important field. And then dates are very important. We want to store dates as actual dates. Um, like you saw, we could drop down to a calendar and click on that. Um, and sometimes the way Excel sorts dates doesn't translate well. So what we've done is just given you three different fields to store dates. So you would put in the number for the month, date, and year. I'm going to do that here. And then a death date. And 
And if the dates are after a certain date, if they are all after 1899, if they're in the 1900s, then this will automatically calculate an age. Um, Excel doesn't like dates before 1900, so if you have those dates, that date is not automatically populated. Also wanted to point out that almost all of these are optional fields, so the grave location ID would not be optional. We would need that, but if you don't have date of birth or age, none of these things are, are required. As long as we have this location to tie this line of records to the grave itself, then we're good to go. You can add um, fields, you can ignore fields if you want, but it's the way that they're stored that's important. Also important to know if you have two burials in this grave, then you would just um, add a whole nother line. I wanted to make that the same. Add a whole nother line for that grave. Um, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't continue the Excel sheet to have another deceased name and another date of birth, another, another date of death we would want a line for each one. And again, that's because the way we relate to the polygons, then we can have as many burial records or sales records as we want. I'm gonna wrap it up here, guys, sorry. Um, and sales are pretty much the same way. So again, we, we do have space for two owners because we know that frequently you will have two owners for a grave. Um, and then purchase date, if you wanted to keep track of your owner contact information, you could keep that here. Um, but really the important ones are the grave ID. After that, it's, it's whatever information that you have. And then the final step in the process would be creating those maps um, and then providing you the apps for um, interaction with that data. So it's not one size fit all, fits all. We're not, not selling you software, but, but a platform for you to manage your records. Um, we love this work and um, I'm hoping I hope that you learned something and we will provide this Excel sheet at the end for anybody who is interested. So Bill, you got, do we have any questions? Uh, yeah, a couple here. It's, uh, you actually answered one. Uh, we <laughs> okay. had one asking about multiple interments in the same grave. Yep. Um, so that's good. Um, another one, someone was asking, let's see, we have water and irrigation lines, water lines throughout our cemetery. Can you show those on the map? Yes. Yep. So if I go back to here, we can have as many layers as we need. So we happen to have all the utilities on the same layer, but we could certainly divide those out. So you could just have a water layer. You could have a, a potable water layer versus a irrigation water layer. So anything that's tied to the ground, we can, we can create a layer for and um, help you manage that. Perfect. Uh, that was that was actually only the couple questions we had. I'm going to share back over and get to the contact screen here. So guys, thank you so much for attending our webinar. Uh, like we said, hope we learned something. Um, we look out for an email a follow up. I like to send out a survey um, along with um, for everybody that attended and like Aaron said we will send you out a copy of the spreadsheet um, if that's something that your cemetery could make use of um, again that's just it's one way to keep track of your records but um, it's a it's a very good way for us to move forward with what we need to do for mapping so uh, more information obviously can be found at cloudpointgeo.com slash cemeteries uh, my email is up there bsteel at cloudpointgeo.com also, phone number here at the office to get a hold of me, 877-377-8124. We're also um, all over social media, so search for CloudPoint Geographics there and subscribe and follow us there. And again, uh, thank you for attending our webinar, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you.